And let's bring you an update from Russia's invasion of Ukraine now. Ukrainian military update says that Russia has launched a fresh round of deadly missile attacks on Ukraine. The military said the eastern cities of Kramostork, Kostyanikova and Pavlyorod have all been targeted with attacks. The Russians also carried out 27 airstrikes and fired 45 multiple launch rocket systems shells at Ukrainian troops position and inhabited areas resulting in deaths and injuries among the civilian population. But the statement did not specify the number of civilians who were killed or injured and where this happened. Meanwhile, at least 25 people, including three children, have been injured in Russian missile attacks overnight, and that's according to the Ukrainian region governor. In a statement, Governor Sherik Alisiak said the missiles hit a residential area in the city, damaging homes, schools and stores. He adds that rescue operations are underway in the area of that attack. Meanwhile, four civilians have also been killed by Ukrainian shelling in the Russian border of Berens. According to the local governor, Alexandra Bogomis, the airstrikes hit residential buildings in the village of Zukemma and the Semiki region. The regions share a border in its south and Ukraine to its west and Belarus. Russian officials have blamed Ukraine for a spate of attacks this weekend. And authorities in Russian occupied Donetsk said that two people have died and 12 were injured in the shelling over the weekend. As for Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, he says that Kiev will launch its counteroffensive against Russian forces despite not having received Western fighter aircraft. Mr. Zelensky was, has on multiple occasions appealed to widening the scope of Western military aid for Ukraine. Speaking to journalists in Kiev, he said that there were countries that have fought F-16 and other Western kind aircraft that were ready to help Ukraine. Ukrainian Air Force only has Soviet era fighter aircraft. We need to understand that we can't drag the counteroffensive out, which is why we'll start before we receive F-16s or other models. But to calm Russia down, with the fact that we still need a couple of months to train on the aircraft, and only then we'll start a counteroffensive. The head of Russian private military company Wagner has threatened to withdraw its missionaries from the battled eastern city of Bakhmut if they don't receive more munitions to continue the fight. The point had warnings for Russian defense officials, including Defense Minister Sergei Shirgu, came as Bakhmut remained heavily contested. Prizogin said in his words, I am appealing to Sergei Shoigu with a request to issue ammunition immediately. Now, if this is refused, I deem it necessary to inform the commander-in-chief about the exiting problems, existing problems, and to make a decision regarding the feasibility of continuing to station units in the settlement of Bakhmut, given the current shortage of ammunition. The Wagner boss claimed in an interview that those responsible for weapons procurement in Russia have stopped giving them ammunition. He says that losses in Bakhmut are five times higher than necessary because of a lack of artillery ammunition. The withdrawal of some fighters from Bakhmut won't be likely, but he warns that this will mean that the Russian front line will collapse elsewhere. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian military spokesperson says that Kyiv is in control of a key supply route into Bakhmut. Russian forces have been trying for 10 months now to punch their way into the shattered remains of what was once a city of 70,000 people. Kyiv has pledged to defend Bakhmut, which Russia sees as a stepping stone to attacking other cities. Sherry Cherivati, which was a spokesperson for Ukrainian troops in the east, said that for several weeks now, Russians have been talking about seizing the road of life as well as about constant fire control over that area. Sherivati added that the road of life is a vital road between the ruined Bakhmut and the nearby town of Chasivyar and the west, a distance just over 17 kilometers.
Swedish and Finnish troops practiced carrying out amphibious operations south of Stockholm as part of the largest national defense exercise of its kind in Sweden in the last 25 years. The maneuvers which saw Finnish and Sweden troops practicing working together during these operations were part of the Aurora 23, which is an exercise that launched across Sweden on April the 17th with some 26,000 personnel taking part and trips from 14 nations, including the United States, Britain and France, all participating. The drill comes shortly after Finland, which applied to join NATO in the month of May last year with Sweden, became the 31st member of the alliance earlier last month. Though that Finland had joined NATO and we are waiting for, for, for the, uh, the membership, it, it is of great importance. We feel safer today when Finland has joined and we will feel, of course, even more safer when we are joining NATO. But before that, prior to that, we need to, to continue our great exercises which we have had so many decades back. It, it, it's even more important to, to uh, do cooperation uh, between Finland and Sweden when we both are in NATO in the future. So it's, it's, it's good. We have always do cooperation and I'm pretty sure that we are doing that in NATO also. And joining NATO for me is a very good thing. I've always been been of that opinion that it should be good to be in NATO and it feels more comfortable I think. We have a lot more more people taking it on our side than now. And it's, more safer feeling. It's uh, very good that Finland is entering uh, NATO. Uh, we expect to be second after them. So uh, for us, it's it's only uh, good to to have this exercise together with them. Yeah, and and we will join uh, NATO later. Uh, yeah, so it's it's not a problem for us. We we are used to to uh, exercise together with fin, uh, Finnish uh, troops. Pope Francis says the Vatican is involved in a peace mission to try to end the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, declining to give further details. Speaking to reporters during a flight home after a three-day visit to Hungary, the Pope said in his words, I am willing to do everything that has to be done. There is a mission in cause now, but it is not yet public. When it is public, I will reveal it. I think that peace is always made by opening channels. You can never achieve peace through closure, and this is not easy. The Pope added that he had spoken about the situation in Ukraine with Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban and the Metropolitan Hilarion Bishop representing the Russian Orthodox Church in Budapest. But Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, and Pope Francis has pleaded for peace practically on a weekly basis, has repeatedly expressed a wish to act as a broker between Kiev and Moscow.